بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في سبيل الله المشركين وعبد ربه حتى أتاه اليقين فصلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه المنتخبين وعلى من سار على نهجهم وسلك طريقهم إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد Dear Muslims, in the middle of the Meccan seerah when our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was struggling with his da'wah against the Quraysh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a child, a son, whom he named Abdullah. And Abdullah grew up for a few years, but Allah had willed that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not have any sons that live to adulthood. Later on in Medina, Allah revealed, ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم is not the father of any of your men but he is something better than this ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين he is رسول الله and he is the seal of the prophets so Abdullah was born but Allah had willed no son would live to become a man and so Abdullah died at the age of one or two years old and this was the only son that the Prophet ﷺ had in this time frame. He only had daughters. The Quraysh, his enemies, Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, Al As ibn Wa'il, Walid ibn al Mughira. When Abdullah was born, they felt a sense of trepidation. They felt anxiety because in their jahili minds, the birth of a son meant the message will continue. They viewed the message via sons. And they felt that if the son is alive, then when the father passes away, the message will continue. When Abdullah passed away, and he died as a child, they jumped up for joy. al As ibn Wa'il, one of the worst enemies, he jumped up in front of the Kaaba and he shouted to the people, قَدْ بُتِرَ Muhammad, قَدْ بُتِرَ Muhammad." It's a very vulgar thing to translate, so I will hint at what is said, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, astaghfirullah, has become amputated, as if it's amputated. And so he rejoiced at the death of his own nephew, because in the end of the day, they're all relatives. It is his own kith and kin, his own tribesmen. They were so happy that Abdullah died. He's jumping for joy and announcing that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has become amputated because in their minds they felt when his sons are gone there is no son then the religion will also go away with no sons Islam will cease to exist and so they're happy at this can you imagine when we go through a tragedy the least that we want is some comfort from our family the least that brings us a little bit of happiness, our kith and kin, our relatives, they hug, they make dua for us, they bring us joy. Can you imagine? These people were so depraved in their hatred. Their animosity has reached such incomprehensible levels that they are happy at the death of a baby. This is the level of their hatred. Jumping for joy that Muhammad Sassam has become amputated. Can you imagine how pained, how much grief, how much sorrow is in the heart of our Prophet and He's lost his son and on top of that, his own people are rejoicing. It was at this time, it was due to this circumstance that Allah revealed a surah that is the topic of our khutbah today. Allah revealed a surah in response to this incident. And that is a surah we have all memorized and we recite almost daily. If we understand the beauty of this surah, the profound message that is in this surah, if we understand the depth of meaning and the circumstance why Allah revealed this surah, we will never look at the surah in the same way. And we will appreciate this surah and love it with a new appreciation and a new love. Which surah am I talking about? It is the smallest and the shortest surah in the whole Quran. 
And that is why our children memorize it. And that is why we, when we pray our salah, we want to be lazy, we want to hasten up. We use this surah because it's the shortest surah. But we don't realize even though it is short, it is deep in meaning. It is profound in its context. This surah was revealed at the death of Abdullah. When Abdullah passed away, because of this, Allah revealed Surah Al-Kawthar. What has Surah Al-Kawthar got to do with the death of Abdullah? Let us go over the meanings so we understand the context of revelation, the sabab al nuzul Allah says, Inna a'atainaka al-Kawthar. Ya Rasulallah, we, and Allah here is talking about the royal we, that when Allah says inna, this is us, meaning the royal we. Allah is of, of course one, al ahad al-Samad. When he uses the plural, it is the plural of majesty. We, ya Rasulallah, have gifted you. A'tainaka. We have chosen you. The kaf here, one person. Out of the whole world, we have chosen one person. And we have gifted. We have honored. A'tayna is not a salary. Ya Rasulullah, this is not something we're paying you for something you've done. We are honoring you. We are gifting you. We are giving you a privilege because we want to show your maqam, your status. The word ata is indicating Allah wants to honor. Ata is not a hadiyah. Ata is a karam. Ata is a generosity. Allah is giving and showing His generosity to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? To show the status of who Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. Ya Rasulullah, we have gifted you something that is more precious than one soul and that is Al-Kawthar. Al-Kawthar, what is Al-Kawthar? Al-Kawthar, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is the largest river of Jannah. It is the primary river of Jannah. It is the river that every single person of Jannah will continuously drink from. It is a river, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, its banks, meaning the bottom of the river, it is paved in gold. And the shores of this river, there are pearls and emeralds. And the goblets or the drinking cups are more than the, uh, than the stars in the sky. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it's water, it's the river that is flowing in it. It is whiter than milk. It is colder than ice. It is sweeter than honey. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever drinks from the kawthar will never be thirsty for all of eternity. The kawthar is the eternal fountain of Jannah. Can you imagine how many people will be in Jannah? And can you imagine how long they will be drinking forever and ever and ever? That river will never stop. It will never become dry. It will be continuous and continuous. And this is what Al-Kawthar means. Al-Kawthar from Kathir. If you know Arabic, Kathir means a lot. Al-Kawthar, the source of a lot. Where does Kathir come from? Al-Kawthar. Al-Kawthar, Allah is saying this river will give and it will give and it will give and it will give and give and give and give and never stop giving. This is Al-Kawthar. Allah is telling the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, even if we have taken a child, we have given you something more precious than one life. And that is the river that will give life to billions and billions of people for all of eternity. The river of Jannah, that every person of Jannah, every time they drink, they will think of you. They will remember you. Because that river, even though the people of Jannah will drink from it, it is actually for you, Ya Rasulullah. It's your gift, Ya Rasulullah. And you will gift it to the people of Jannah. You will be the one, your honor, your generosity. Every single time, every person takes one sip from Kawthar. May Allah make us amongst those people. Every time, any person person in Jannah takes one sip from Kawthar, he will remember, this is not my river. This is not my property. This is Allah's gift to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he has given us permission to drink. Can you imagine the legacy that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has is much more than the legacy of one son. It's much vast than the legacy of a child or children. It is the legacy of eternity. Ya Rasul Allah, we have gifted you the gift of eternal life. We have gifted you the gift of eternal fountains for every single person 
person in Jannah. Your memory will never fade. It will be remembered until the very end of times and beyond that because you will be the one who will give Talqawthar to the people of Jannah. So Allah Azza wa Jal is giving him solace. Allah is giving him comfort. Ya Rasulullah, we have honored you. We have given you karam. We have raised your ranks. As Allah says in the Quran, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ Your dhikr, Ya Rasulullah, has been raised up. Dhikr here means your remembrance, your maqam raised up and so ya rasulallah do not feel sad we have gifted you a magnificent gift and we have been generous upon you to give you al kawthar notice here then allah says fasalli li rabbika wanhar the fa here it is a clausal fa meaning because we have given you the kawthar therefore you should pray and sacrifice and give udhiyah give qurbani one har is to give qurbani and udhiyah salli you pray salah and so Allah is saying, because we have gifted you al kawthar Ya Rasulullah, in, in light of this, what should you do? We want you to show your thanks. How do you show your thanks? By all types of ibadat. And the most important ibadat are salah and zakah and sadaqah. These are the two most important. And salah is the pinnacle and the queen of the ibadat of the body. And zakah and sadaqah is the pinnacle and queen of the ibadat of money. And so by referencing salah and zakah, all the other ibadat are implied as well. Because salah includes dhikr, salah includes sajda, salah includes Quran, salah includes dua. All of the ibadat of the body are indicated by salah. And when you give money to others, when you give charity to others, this is all of the ibadat that are service to other people. Khidmatul khalq is also of the ibadat. And so, fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Now notice so many things to be said here. Realize, Jannah and al kawthar is gifted independent of salah, independent of zakah. Let no Muslim think, let no Muslim think that I will earn Jannah because I am praying. Dear Muslims, your prayer and your sacrifice and your charities are not that precious that they will earn Jannah. Jannah is more precious than our deeds. Rather, we will offer Allah what we can and Allah will accept and magnify. Allah will immerse us in His mercy. Then Allah will gift us Jannah. Our Prophet ﷺ said, none of you, none of you earns Jannah through his good deeds. They said, not even you, Ya Rasulullah. He said, not even me until Allah envelopes me, surrounds me with his rahmah. Let no one be arrogant and say, oh, I am praying, so I deserve Jannah. I gave a hundred shillings, a thousand shillings, I deserve Jannah. No, Wallahi, your entire life, if you were to dedicate to the worship of Allah, it is not that precious that you will get a spot in Jannah for all of eternity. Jannah is too precious for our deeds, but Allah is Kareem. Allah is generous. Allah is Rahman. Allah is Rahim. We come to Allah with small deeds, meager deeds, and Allah will bless. Allah is Shakur. Allah will magnify those deeds, and Allah will give us more reward than what we have earned. This is how we will get Jannah. Not transaction. We are not purchasing Jannah. We are not buying Jannah with our good deeds. No, we are demonstrating, Ya Rabb, we want to thank you. And we are going to fall short, but this is our meager thanks. Whatever we can do, we want you to bless us with more. And so Allah is saying to the Prophet ﷺ, your maqam in Jannah, it's already there, but you should show gratitude. How do you show gratitude? We show gratitude by worshiping Allah and by benefiting the creation. These are the two principles of our religion. If somebody had to summarize Islam in one sentence, it would be you worship Allah from the depths of your heart and you benefit as many people as you can. This is Islam. You worship Allah from the depth of your heart and you benefit as many people as you can. This is all of Islam. The rest of Islam, all of the advanced stuff, this is footnotes. This is just the you know technicalities, the essence of Islam. You worship Allah from the qalb and you do khidmat al-khalq as much as you can. And this is what fasalli rabbika wanhar. You pray to your Lord and you sacrifice. When you sacrifice, what is the purpose of sacrifice? Sacrificing an animal. You sacrifice an animal to feed the hungry, to feed the poor. You sacrifice an animal so that those that are 
less fortunate, they're able to enjoy, they're able to live life. So this is khidmat al-khalq. Now other, another interesting point here. The word used here is one har. And Arabic, as you know, is a very, very powerful language. And it has multiple verbs for similar actions. And for sacrificing animals, you have two main verbs. Dhabaha and nahara. And dhabaha, dhabiha, it is used for smaller animals, like goats, even cows. Nahar is used for large animal, like the camel. And Allah is saying to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, we want you to go to the highest. We want you to sacrifice not just a chicken, not just a goat, sacrifice camels for the sake of Allah and feed the hungry and poor. Now what is interesting, when this ayah came down, the Prophet ﷺ did not have wealth to purchase camels. Actually, when this ayah came down, he didn't even own a camel. He didn't. The first camel he owned, Qaswa, he owned it one week before the hijrah. When Abu Bakr purchased it for him and he gave it to the Prophet ﷺ and then the Prophet ﷺ insisted to pay him back. That was his first camel, Qaswa. He didn't have a camel. But Allah is saying, Ya Rasulullah, we want you to sacrifice a camel and distribute it to the poor. And subhanAllah, this shows us so much depth and profundity of them. Even when you don't have, you should aspire that I want to be the best pious person. You don't have a million shillings. Say to yourself, if Allah were to give me a million shillings, I will give one third of it, one half of it. I will give one tenth of it. You ha aspire to a high goal, even if you don't have it. He didn't have a camel. Allah is saying, we want you to sacrifice a camel. In this is also a prediction because when Allah commands, you know Allah will fulfill the context to, to allow those commands to happen. It is as if Allah is saying, Ya Rasulullah, a time will come. I know you don't have camels now. A time will come when Allah will bless you with wealth. And when you have wealth, don't forget this commandment. And I want you to sacrifice camels. SubhanAllah, 15 years after this ayah came down, 15 years only after this ayah came down, our Prophet returned and performed Hajjatul Wada. And he fulfilled this ayah. And he sacrificed not one, one, not ten, one hundred camels. He sacrificed and he gave it to all of the hujjaj. He remembered the commandment of Allah and he fulfilled that commandment. When Allah blessed him and he was now the leader of Medina and the state, now he returned to Mecca and he sacrificed one hundred camels. Also realize, brothers and sisters, that the concept, therefore, of gratitude. How do we show shukr to Allah? Shukr is shown primarily via our actions. Via our actions. Allah is saying, Ya Rasulullah, we gifted you al kawthar You should be thankful. How should you be thankful? Demonstrate your thanks by worshipping and by doing khidmah of khalq. This is how we show thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukr is primarily shown by our deeds and actions. Allah says in the Quran, I'malu ala Dawood shukra. Show me, O family of Dawood, your, your, your shukr, your thankfulness via your deeds. I'malu shukra. Show me the amal of shukr. If Allah has blessed us with health, shukr is to use that health in helping other people. If Allah has blessed us with wealth, shukr is to use that wealth in helping other people. Whatever Allah has given us, shukr is demonstrated by actions and not just simply by saying, Oh, Alhamdulillah. That is the beginning of shukr. To, Verbally is the beginning of shukr. But the real shukr is not just verbal. The real shukr is shown in your deeds. And this is what Allah is saying. And then Allah concludes the surah. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. Inna here in Arabic, it is an emphasis. And I don't want to get too technical. But this ayah, it has five different mechanisms. If you know your Arabic Balagha and, and Nahu, it has five mechanisms to emphasize. For the younger generation, you know how you tweet something and you put it in bold or italics, or if you send a message, you put it in multicolor or something. This is emphasis, right? There's ways of emphasizing. You want to bring attention. In Arabic, there are so many ways. This ayah, five different ways of emphasizing what is in this verse. It is as if you've underlined it, you've bolded, you've made it caps, it is blinking in your screen. Allah wants you to know this message. Inna shani'aka huwa al abtar. Again, multiple ways. I don't want to uh, go into the balagha here. But indeed, verily, no, Ya Rasulallah, no one should doubt 
that the one who has a hatred of you, shani'aka, the word shana'a is a very unique word in the Arabic language. Generally, it indicates an emotional rage. Shana'a is an emotional anger. An anger that doesn't have a reason. It doesn't have a cause. It's coming from irrationality. It is as if Allah is saying, Ya Rasulullah, nobody can hate you for a legitimate reason. Nobody can hate you for a rational reason. Anybody who hates you, it's emotional. Anybody who hates you, it's a problem with him. Even the word Allah used is not bold, which is another type of hatred. It is shana'a. And shana'a is an irrational, emotional hatred. And Allah says, Inna shani'aka. No, Ya Rasulullah, the one who has an irrational hatred of you. Hua, here is another emphasis. That very person. You don't need the hua in Arabic. You can have a complete sentence without hua. But adding that hua is a mechanism of emphasis here. The person who hates you, that very person, hua, al-abtar, he will be the one who is the most amputated of all who are amputated. Al-As ibn Wa'il said, Qad butira Muhammad, Qad butira Muhammad. Allah said, the one who hates you, he is al-abtar. He is the one who is completely amputated. There is nothing that will remain of that person's legacy. Meaning, anybody who despises the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anybody who says something bad against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anybody who mocks or ridicules the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he dies in that fate, he dies in that state, that person shall have no legacy whatsoever. Not in this world and not in the hereafter. And how true is this? When Al-As jumped up and shouted, Qad butira Muhammad, at that point, Al-As was a wealthy man. Al-As had 10 sons. Al-As was a chieftain. Al-As had respect in his community. And people would think, this is, the, this is the, 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 the politician. This is the wealthy man. This is the businessman. Everybody knew Al-As ibn Wa'il. And subhanAllah, now the only people who mention his names are the ones who mention it in the context of the surah and want to curse him for what he has done. Where is his legacy? Where is his wealth? Where is his sons? Where is all that he built up? As Allah says, the one who despises you will be cut off from all good. This is in this dunya. What do you think will happen in the akhirah to the likes of Al-As ibn Wa'il? And by, by mentioning that the one who hates you will have no legacy, the implication is the one who loves you will be the one who has legacy. The one who follows you, the one who obeys you, who honors you that is the one who will have a legacy so if you want to have a legacy you want to have baraka you want allah to bless you then you have to be the opposite of this verse you have to have mahabba of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you have to have the respect of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as allah says in the quran that لتعزروه وتوقروه وتسبب بكرة معصيلة or that you may praise and you may love and you may honor the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is what our religion commands us to do and if we want those blessings to come to us and if we want to share in the legacy and if we want to drink from al kawthar the way to do so is to be of those who love rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who honor him who believe in him and realize O oh muslims realize every blessing and every karam and every gift and every honor that our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given every one of us because we are his ummah we too share small amount infinitesimally small but we too share in that honor because we are his ummah so when allah raises him and allah blesses him then we are his ummah alhamdulillah by raising him we thank allah he created us in the best of all ummas we thank allah he sent us the best of all prophets we thank allah we are in the ummah of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam dear muslims this is the short surah al kawthar its meanings are profound even though it is the shortest surah it was a consolation that our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was given we learn in the hadith that our prophet sallallahu closed his eyes and then he opened them and he was smiling he was beaming and our sahaba say when he would smile it is as if the moon was shining amongst us when he would smile it was as if the whole world was illuminated he was smiling you could see his teeth and he said allah has just revealed to me a surah 
it is more precious to me than this whole world and all that is in it. And then he said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Inna Atayna Kal Kauthar, Fasali Rabbika Wanhar, Inna Shani Akahuel Abtar. This surah was more precious to our Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, than this whole dunya. And he was happy when it was revealed. Let us also rejoice when we recite it. Let us also feel the happiness that he had. Let us also understand the implications and ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to be of those who are blessed in this manner. And drink from Al-Kawthar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me and you with and through the Quran and may he make us of those who its verses they understand and applies halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness. He was well ask him for he is the Ghafoor and the Rahman. Alhamdulillah Al-Wahid Al-Ahad Al-Samad الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وبعد Dear Muslims, one of the powerful messages of the Quran and a number of our great ulama of tafsir have mentioned this point is that if you look at these surahs that we memorize our children and we ourselves memorize as we all know there are two surahs that are the most favorite of the entire ummah they are the favorite because they are the shortest not because of the meaning but if you look at the meanings of these two, you realize Allah has summarized all of Islam in these two surahs. And we know what these two surahs are, Surah Ikhlas and Surah Al-Kawthar. In fact, we love these surahs so much, sometimes, unfortunately, we recite them in every single salah. Not because of the meaning, but because they're the shortest. No problem. Okay, recite them. They are halal to recite, good to recite. No problem. But our scholars point out, isn't it so profound Surah Al-Ikhlas is about what? All of it is about Allah's uniqueness. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ And that is another khutbah we don't have time for today, but understand this point. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ عَدَ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدُ لَمِنَ الْوَلَمِنَ وَلَمِنَ كُلْهُ كُفُوَنْ أَحَدٌ We are praising Allah for His uniqueness. And what is Surah Al-Kawthar about? We are praising the Prophet for His uniqueness. And what is Islam? أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Knowing how weak our iman is, knowing we're going to choose the two shortest surahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, if that's what you want to do. And again, I reiterate, it is permissible to recite these two surahs in every single you know, salah that we do, no problem. But understand there is also a balagha, a wisdom here, that by reciting these two surahs, we are constantly increasing our love of Allah and our love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear Muslims, the religion of Islam is so simple, as I said. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purely, sincerely. Take as your role model the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love him with all of your heart. Strive to be as good as... You can never reach his level, but as you take him as a role model, you take him as the one that is your qudwa, then insha'Allah ta'ala, you have the perfect qudwa. And then in this world, spread as much good as you can. Make as many people happy as you can. As our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best believer is the one who is the most beneficial to other believers. The best believer is the one who helps the most believers. That the, the, the one who is going to be most blessed is the one who helps the most people. Do not complicate the religion of Islam. Our religion is so easy. We worship one God and we help mankind as much as we can. Dear Muslims, there's so much to say to you, but I just want to leave on one very important point. Look at the world today. Look at the Islamophobia, misunderstandings people have of our faith. Look at how they've misunderstood the Quran, misunderstood the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They have wrong ideas of who we are. It is our job, it is our responsibility that wherever we go, everybody we interact with, we leave them with the good impression of our religion. And what is our religion? Worshipping Allah and being good to mankind. That's all our religion is. If every one of us did this small thing if every one of us understood we are all ambassadors to the broader world the non-muslims don't know who our prophet is when they see you 
they think you will be following his sunnah. So for the sake of Allah and for the love of the Prophet wasallam, do not lie to them, do not cheat them, do not steal them, be honest with them, show them mercy, show them compassion, be the best that you can be, not even for yourself, for the sake of Allah and for the sake of the honor of your Prophet wasallam. We have a very big responsibility, we have a very massive responsibility and it is not that difficult to do. All we must do is be the best that we can be and follow the teachings of our Prophet Sallallahu And if we do so, SubhanAllah, Allah will give us this dunya. He will give us the akhirah. How easy is our faith? How beautiful is the religion we have? How sweet is the message our Prophet Sallallahu left us with? And so we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with His mercy and rahmah to make us of the best of the ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu. Allahumma la tad'a fi hadhi yawmi dhamban illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farrajta ولا دينا إلا قضيت ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا عسيرا إلا يسرت اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بسوء فاشغله بنفسه وجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملاك لقدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأن